Welcome back guys, this is part 2 of our elevator build video series. This map is called Krentz by R. Trowick. I hope I got that right. I was kind of confused by the Planet Philip post actually, it seems that some of the screenshots might have got a little bit mixed up, so I hope this is the correct map name. But we shall continue regardless. I, c I can always change it in the comments if I did get it wrong. So, many crates in a room. <laughs> Um, I think I would have preferred a... Uh... Wow. <laughs> so, that was a physics bug in the Half-Life 2 engine. I have no idea what happened there. Uh, I'm 99% sure there's nothing wrong with the map there, but I just thought it was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think if, if you're going to have a room with lots of physics props in it like this, um it's usually a good idea to have a little bit more variety than just a whole bunch of crates. This just looks a bit strange, I think, in my opinion. I like that you have to explore and find the crowbar before you can continue. That's cool. Forces the player to look around a little bit. Now, this this next puzzle, the, um, the mechanics are okay, I just think the visuals uh, could have been a bit stronger to kind of grab the player's attention better in, in a lot of areas. So, for instance, uh, you see the three lights on the uh, generator here. And uh, as you activate each mechanism, the light will, will turn green. Now, in principle, this is a fine mechanic, but uh, I just think that the, uh, the green lights, uh, they're not quite visible enough. I didn't really notice them on... This isn't my first playthrough, but uh, on my first playthrough I didn't actually notice the green lights until I'd activated all three of the mechanisms. <laughs> so there's a second button there. And uh, the third one, th these first two buttons that you have to pull are fine. This third one confused me for a bit actually. So you know, it's got one more left here to do, which is down here. And again, it's another steam puzzle. <laughs> you know how much I hate these, because uh, like the, the visual language of steam is just, it's not very well thought out. Even in Half-Life 2, like some steam hurts you, some steam doesn't. And in custom maps as well, it's just all over the place. If steam hurts you, does it do one damage? Does it do 50 damage? Does it kill you outright? It's, it seems to be different in pre pretty much every single mod you play. <laughs> Which is a bit of a problem. In here, it, it does a fair amount of damage. I think it does about 20 damage per hit, which is a uh, fairly large. You notice I tried to crawl under it here. You can't do that. It almost looks like you should be able to, but no, I guess not. <laughs> you see, this is the the activator here. You have to push that thing into the pipe, which I guess blocks off the the uh, gas flow or something. But it's, it's not particularly obvious what it does. I mean, again, it's it's a new kind of mechanic. I haven't really seen anything like this in a map before where something actually slides into a pipe to block the flow. Uh, it's a good idea, but I just think the visuals don't communicate it very well. The, uh, the mechanism just looks like a, a bit of detail on the wall. It doesn't actually look like something you can interact with. I think if it had um, a button on it or something, something to draw the player's attention. Yeah, I got a little bit confused. <laughs> so there we go. I mean, the way it slides into place, it's obvious what it does once you realise you can use it, but until that point, it's very confusing. Then we can grab our battery and complete this puzzle. The other thing I thought was a little bit odd was like, once you've finished this puzzle, the only way to get out of this room is. Uh, kind of jump all over this generator to get out. It's just felt a little bit weird. Um, it would have been nice if, uh, you know, as the power turned on, uh, perhaps a ladder opened up and fell down that you could climb up. Something like that. So some good ideas here, but it's just sometimes a little bit confusing, but overall it's, it's okay. Yes, I thought I was about to die to a head crab. That would have been uh, quite bad. <laughs> now this this next part I like as well, but we're going to come back to it later with something I didn't like. 
So uh, you notice here the little slot in the wall there, and uh, it does kind of catch my attention because I haven't really seen anything like that before. So I figured we were looking for something to stick in there, and lo and behold, there's a giant yellow keycard here. This goes back to like Doom and Quake days, like gold keycards, gold, you know, keys and everything like that. So it's pretty cool. And the colour makes it stand out from the environment as well. You, you know, as soon as you see it, it instantly looks important, so... That works really well. And again, we'll come back to this mechanic later, so keep it in your head. Now, this outside area, it's, um... It's fairly lacking in terms of visuals. Like, the... Um, all the cliffs around the side are just kind of flat brushes. Uh, it really looks like it could have used a little bit more work just to uh, get it feeling be better than it is. But again, there's some nice mechanics here, so you can kind of run around and avoid all the enemies if you like, or you can just fight them head on. And there's some nice, uh, there's a nice little secret up there that you can find as well. If you, uh, if you do some crate stacking. <laughs> Getting a bike inserted in my face. We find the gravity gun there. Which I like. I think it's one of the few maps which gave you a gravity gun actually. Which is nice. And again, finding health packs um, in the environment like that. Actually, I can't remember. It might have been the same author that did this in a previous uh, Dorville map. I can't remember. What exactly which, which author it was that had the health packs kind of attached to the wall with like a first aid thing on it. you will notice here at this because he's used a decal on the wall and he's placed it too close to the floor so it applies the decal to the floor as well. If you're having problems like this you want to use an overlay so you can you can control exactly what brush faces uh, the graphic will appear on. So here I'm trying to do some awesome stacking to get up there, but it doesn't quite work. There's actually a much easier way to do this around the other side. <laughs> I'll just do that now. And uh, on my first playthrough, I didn't actually realise this was up here. I just kind of, on my second playthrough, I just decided to have a look around. And uh, I wasn't expecting anything really to be up there. I thought it was kind of breaking the map. But uh, it turns out there's a nice shotgun secret up here. So I was very pleased to find this. But this is something I wasn't so keen of. Like, you just found this secret area and it's like the map's punishing you for finding it. <laughs> Throwing all these enemies at you. I mean, maybe, maybe one or two? I'm not even sure then. But it just seems like he's trying to kill you for finding a secret. <laughs> So let's continue. And again, uh, from a visual standpoint, this map is fairly basic. I don't think there's any denying that. But uh, the puzzles uh, show a lot of promise from this author. I mean, there's some of them are a bit rough around the edges, and uh, like I mentioned before, some of the visual language needs to be improved to communicate mechanics to the player better. But uh, overall, it's it's pretty solid. Now this next part is pretty weird though, I've got to say. Um, I mean the fact that you get beaten up and your weapon's stripped, that's fine. I don't really have a problem with that. What, what kind of had a problem with is with this kind of random development textured area. And uh, it's integrated into the environment, so it's not like you just got lazy and didn't texture something correctly before release. Um, the dev textured part of the map beyond that corridor is kind of, it's integrated into the visuals, so like it slowly melts between textured and dev textured map. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But I just don't understand why. It sticks out like a sore thumb. I mean, there's no real reason for it from a, a visual standpoint or a story standpoint. You see what I mean? Like the floor and ceiling, it kind of, it looks like it tiles into existence. I mean, which I like, it's it's a nice presentation of the transition, but just why? 
Why is this here? <laughs> And I completely balls up this this uh, combat area here. I think this area is too dark, really. You can't really see where you are. There's not really enough cover either. You're just kind of thrown into this combat with hardly any warning. And I died. Which sucked. And uh, then I found another fairly large problem with this level. It puts you right back at the start when you die. Oh, have some auto saves. You want to know how you make someone quit your level? That's how you make someone quit your level. Putting them right back at the start when they die. Don't do it. At least we know what's coming this time, so uh, we can prepare a little better. I think generally when you're playtesting your level, if people are dying in one area and then completing it easily on the second time through, then that should set off some alarm bells. It means that uh, you're not communicating your combat well enough and you're ambushing the player without any real chance of uh, them surviving until they actually know what's coming. So if you're finding that in your level, uh, have a look at it. Unless that's your intent, of course. <laughs> if you're trying to kill kill the player and uh, you know make them panic like that, then you're on the right track, I would say. So... This is our third elevator. And again it kind of transitions back into a normal textured map. It's just really confusing, I don't understand the point of that, that whole dev textured area. I mean, I quite like those development textures used in normal mapping. It's, it's kind of very interesting. Uh, artistic way to map. Kind of reminds me of uh, if any of you guys ever played Quake 3 Arena. If you remember any of the Geocomp maps where the only textures you were allowed to use were kind of you know monotone just solid colour textures and all your detail had to come from uh, your geometry and just interesting use of you know colours. If you haven't seen any screenshots from those uh, map packs, I seriously suggest you go and look look them up on lvlworld.com I believe that's a website that he uses these days the geocomp maps are beautiful to look at okay so this area, you remember I was telling you guys to remember the uh, keycard puzzle from before so this is kind of another keycard puzzle which uses similar mechanics but the visual language is nowhere near as good nowhere near so um, the, the idea is that you need to find a keycard and bring it up to a kind of visual sensor. Sorry, not a visual sensor, kind of proximity sensor. You notice here I just kind of picked it up from the desk and didn't realise it was something that, that looked important until I picked it up. But it's, it's just a shame we didn't use another like, you know, really bold colour for the uh, sensor. Like if, it, if it was another bright yellow keycard it would have been a lot easier to find. And again, the whole sensor thing on the wall there, it's just not very clear what that is. I mean, I kind of worked it out because uh, I used to work uh, at a company that used uh, this kind of door lock mechanism. You had to have a key card to get through. Uh, they used a proximity lock on the key card like that. So I'll kind of put two and two together, but perhaps people that haven't used keys like that uh, would have a bit more trouble here. And uh, this this is the end of the map here, and so confusing. Like you start this big fight here, you just start getting into it, and it teleports I you out of the room. I apologize for what must seem to you an arbitrary imposition, Doctor Freeman. I trust it will all make sense to you in the course of well. So yeah, one one anticlimax at the end. Set up a big fight lots of scripting and that and then just remove the player from the map without any real sense of closure uh, what a shame <laughs> so yeah I think um, it's an interesting map it's got some good mechanics in it but it just just needs uh, I think it just needed a lot more playtesting to be honest there's a lot of obvious problems which could have been solved with playtesting 
So that was Krentz, and now we're going to go on to our second map of the pack, which is Countershaft by Tobias Jandir. Jandir? Yandir? Sorry, mate, I've probably butchered your name. I do apologise. I'd never get anyone's name right if it's any consolation. Okay, so instantly, like, um, some mappers like to start the player off on lower health, which is what has happened here, but um, the problem is that you, you saw yourself taking damage when the map started. You want to hide that a lot better. It just feels wrong when you take a bunch of damage when the map loads. It feels like a bug. Uh, you really want to hide it with, like, a... Uh, you know, keep the screen faded or something. Don't let the player see that he's taking a bunch of damage from the map loads. But at this map again is um, it's got fairly basic visuals in terms of brushwork, but it's got some nice, it's got some nice uh, attention to detail in areas and uh, some nice special effects as well, which we'll, we'll get to when we see them. Uh, which overall Im improves the look of the visuals nicely. I wasn't quite sure if I'd activated that properly. So that activates this lift here. So again, it's a nice way to get the player explore. I have a bunch of uh, block uh, breakable things blocking uh, various doors. Make the player find a crowbar and then he can go back and explore. Alright, up we go. So this is kind of the first major puzzle area, and uh, honestly, I found it a little bit confusing. But uh, we'll, we'll get to that as we uh, find it. And again, we have unbreakable padlocks. Bah! Why? Why would you do this? <laughs> Just um, have a have a different way to show that it's unopenable. An unbreakable padlock is no. Don't do it. So here's these these nice kind of puddles on the ground. I don't know if this is a stock Half-Life 2 texture or if this is uh, something custom for this map, but it's really nice either way. And again on the wall we've got the displacement showing the uh, damaged wall there. But it's just really nice attention to detail in certain areas like that. Really liked it. Okay, so here's where things start get, getting a little bit confusing. You see the... Uh, whatever that's meant to be, the screwdriver I guess, kind of blocking the uh, wheel there. No, I figured we'd have to like shoot it off or uh, break it off with the crowbar, but none of that works. Yes, I see you. You must die. <laughs> so when that didn't work, I figured uh, there would be a solution upstairs or something. Now that we've got a pistol, we should be able to shoot those explosives through the door. And that's fine, that, that works really well. Again, I uh, go back to earlier parts of the level when you get a new tool, in this case a pistol. <laughs> so uh, this next part is the bit I didn't really understand. Like After that explosion goes off, you go back downstairs and uh, the screwdriver has come off of the, uh, the wheel. And, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense, like the explosion knocked it free, but... Uh, yeah, as as a player, you don't see that. You don't really make the connection. It's not entirely obvious that that would happen. And you can see the other screwdriver in there with the little visual effect to show that something else needs to go in there. Again, I just think that visual effect needs to be stronger as well. And here you can see I noticed that it's gone and I just didn't understand why. So we can turn the gas off with this now. I mean, the puzzle does fit together nicely. It's just a case of, um, ex you know, again, it's like visuals explain to the player what's happening with the visuals, and uh, I just think it could have been done slightly better here. And again, here I figured that um, I'd have to remove this from the panel and not grab the other one and bring it up here. I mean, I kind of realised fairly quickly that's what I had to do, but... There we go. 
So again, I think it's just kind of uh, explaining your visuals better. It'll solve a lot of this. So this bit was a bit confusing as well until I found the uh, wooden plank sticking out above. Although I didn't really understand why that wooden plank was blocking the. Uh... Oh no, there is actually a. I've just seen it now. There's a little weight on the other side. Okay, so that makes that makes perfect sense now. Then I guess. I just don't like. I don't like the fact that you have to break it with the pistol. That felt a bit wrong to me. I think there should have been another way to get up there, like perhaps a ladder or something, and you, then you can break it with the crowbar. Because, I mean, what happens if for some unfathomable reason the player spe expends all his pistol ammo before he before he sees that wooden uh, plank? Then, as far as I know, the level is now broken because you can't break it. <laughs> I mean, granted, that's a very kind of low probability scenario, but you'd be surprised how many low probability scenarios come up in uh, game levels like this. <laughs> So yeah, I think it's a very short map, but uh, again, just shows some interesting mechanics, but could have been explained better to the player, I feel. Okay, so that, that was, uh, we've got two more maps left to go. Um, I'll hopefully get a video out, uh, maybe by the end of the week, perhaps. We'll see how it goes. Well, until then, I'll see you later, guys.